Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development released its 2014 World Investment Report this week. Terence Creamer has studied the document and joins me to discuss the highlights from an African and South African perspective. Hi Terence. Hi. The figures for South Africa showed a strong recovery in foreign direct investment in 2013. Was this surprising? Well, I think we're living in South Africa, so it's been quite gloom and doom um, for the last few months. We've had this platinum strike that's really lingered. We've seen the end of that, but it's going to take a while to really recover from that. We saw the first quarter GDP figures at 0.6% quarter on quarter, so we went into contraction. There's some fear that the second quarter might not be much better. Although overall, I think there's a few that we won't necessarily dip into a recession for the whole year. So I think when we see a near doubling of our foreign direct investment in 2013, you know, the eyes widen slightly. Uh, you know, we went up to over $8 billion worth of foreign direct investment into South Africa last year, and it was closer to $4 um, billion in the year before. And, you know, we've also gone to the top of the league table in terms of the biggest recipients in Africa. And we haven't been there for a while, and uh, it used to be led by Nigeria. And then we've had countries like Angola also topping that league table. So the fact that we've gone right to the top again in a context where I think most of us are feeling fairly pessimistic about the economy, I think uh, maybe comes as a bit of a surprise. It's hard to know where these figures come from because one big deal does change the whole picture. And, it, and uh, you know, I think there was the big Barclays Africa um, uh, re restructuring with uh, ABSA, with the African assets that could have had an impact. There was this Marriott Hotels group coming into Proteas, Protea Hotel Group, which I think could also uh, be one of the big uh, ticket items. And then Cell C was recapitalized by uh, Saudi Ogre. So there, w there were some of these larger items that came through, but we do also know that the automotive sector has been seeing some uh, investment and there's been some renewable en energy investment. But it's not 100% clear why this has happened. But it, uh, it, it is a positive development. I think, um, I think prob possibly we'll find that it's a lot of uh, foreign companies that are already here, that have subsidiaries here, that are already beefing them up, ready to ride the r African rising tide, or that, that story that's coming through. So South Africa is still seen as a gateway type, uh, type investment lo location for Africa. And although we're not growing very strongly, the neighborhood is, and the prospects in the neighborhood are, is quite, are also quite good. So that's possibly what's uh, happening, maybe more bitty than we have seen in the past instead of these big mega deals. But lots of companies that have been here, they've had a footprint for many years and are starting to align themselves to this growth in the African story. And we see the same trend, I think, uh, with the South African companies. That was also one of the big stories that came out of this UNCTAD report was how big an investor or foreign direct investor South African companies have become, but mostly in the rest of the continent. So I think it was close to six billion rands worth of foreign direct investment flowing out from South African companies into, uh, into the rest of the continent, into the telecoms, retail services, banking, mining uh, industries. But it's also interesting to see that mostly intra-African um, type uh, foreign direct investment is less resource intensive uh, and it's much more around those consumer markets that are emerging, the retail sector, the banking, um, than w what we've got used to in the rest of Africa, these large foreign direct investments really chasing South Africa's resources. So it's, it's more manufacturing, more services based. So that's also a good sign and I think quite supportive of uh, the continent's aspirations uh, to have greater regional integration. Uh, because if you are going to be uh, do setting up manufacturing locations and services, you need those networks, those infrastructure networks to start happening. So there's going to be more and more pressure, I think, on the politicians to start delivering on those uh, cross-border projects. The overall picture for Africa was more mixed, though. Yes, that's correct, uh, and probably quite surprisingly so, because we, you know, we sit here in South Africa and we, we learned that we're no longer the Africa's biggest economy. That spot was uh, has now occupied by Nigeria. So we kind of think, well, you know, what's happening on the foreign direct investment front? We see it was very good for South Africa, very good for Mozambique, and, and also very positive, 15% up 
in East Africa, mostly driven out of, uh, out of Kenya and that story. But um, the rest of the continent, North Africa, West Africa, and Central Africa, uh, were all in decline. And you know, North Africa, you can understand there'd been political instability and tension there. Um, and uh, that hasn't been resolved, especially around Egypt, which continues to attract a lot of investment, but not at the levels that it's used to. And then Central Africa, again, it's the instability and wars. And West Africa, I think, you know, there's been changes in the oil uh, environment in Nigeria and Angola. So actually, Angola became, there was net disinvestment from Angola. And then from, uh, from Nigeria, uh, there's been a whole restructuring there that's also seen that the, the, the inflows that you would have expected into that economy um, are, are not, are, are, you know, not at that, that, on that sort of level. So yes, I think it is a mixed picture. Southern Africa, East Africa, very strong in 2013. Um, the rest of the continent, not as strong. Do you believe the South African FDI recovery is sustainable? Uh, I think that's, that's going to be really the big question. And uh, it is a very volatile number. As I said right at the beginning, one big deal can change everything in the year. But what was good about last year is that uh, the figures showed, and these figures are really drawn from the South African Reserve Bank, uh, is that it was every quarter, so, um, so quarter one, two, three, and four, we saw a positive FDI into South Africa. So it's a, it was almost a bit of a trend that emerged. The third quarter was particularly big, uh, sort of 45, uh, 45 billion rand or something. It was a, it was a large uh, quarter. But even the fourth quarter, there were still positive figures. And the first quarter of this year, the Reserve Bank figure has also been positive. So we've started off on the right foot. Whether we can match this $8 billion this year, I think in the current climate, you know, the investor sentiment's taken a massive knock um, over the first uh, five months of this year with what's happened in the platinum sector. Um, I think uh, the, the we had the elections, which also, you know, makes um, investors skittish. So I think with the strike and with the elections now out of the way, and with a government which is very much signaling that they're wanting to jumpstart this economy, that they realize that it's not just about the external exogenous factors that are limiting our growth, but actually we need to start paying attention to those th factors that are within our grasp and within our power to change. And uh, looking to pay some serious attention right from the president through his State of the Nation address, that while the delivery was, ba was slammed, if you look at the content, I think it was fairly wide, w welcome that there's a lot more focus and attention being given to the economy. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the line, the ministers that come that are coming through uh, every statement, whether it's be the finance minister, Klantlanene, whether it's the new small business minister, uh, Lindiwe Zulu, whether it's the trade and industry minister, Rob Davies or Ibrahim Patel, you know, the, the mantra is there that we really need to deal with these domestic factors that are limiting growth. We, we go, we're going to put in place plans to make the private sector a little bit happier about this uh, environment that they're living in. There has been this division between, or schism that's emerged between business and government. And I think uh, President Zuma took the lead in saying that we need to start healing this relationship. And they're going to start by with this big business working group. Uh, he's going to be chairing that. But I think crucially is what uh, the deputy president, um, Cyril Ramaphosa, has got this task of bringing the social partners back together at NEDLAC and really coming coming together, trying to heal those rifts that have emerged, especially around the, the hostile labor environment, looking at what are the impediments to growth and trying to make this economy a much more favorable destination, not just for foreign di direct investment, also domestic investment, and crucially to really stimulate entrepreneurship and small business creation, which is really the ticket out of what we, you know, this, this triple scourge of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.